In this episode, we're going to continue to look at Pink Floyd as they continue to evolve, and we're going to start in 1973 and move up to present day. Let's drop the needle. Their ninth album is called Wish You Were Here, and Roger Waters has said that the album was actually inspired by Sid Barrett. Apparently, Sid wandered into the studio one day, and the other members didn't even recognize him. He looked so different. The tracks are Shine On You Crazy Diamond, parts one through five, Welcome to the Machine, Have a Cigar, which includes the line, Which One is Pink, Wish You Were Here, and Shine On You Crazy Diamond, parts six through nine. The album was another big hit for them, reaching number one both in the US and in the UK. With all the money they were making, the band decides to build their own custom studio, but tensions inside the members of the band are increasing. The album that they make is called Animals, and it's also pretty famous for its cover, which shows a pig flying over London's Battersea Station. Now, in actuality, the pig was tethered, but the lines broke, and so the inflatable pig flew away and it drifted over Heathrow Airport where it disrupted flight operations. And then the pig finally came down back to earth in appropriately a farmyard. Tracks include Pigs on the Wing Part 1, Dogs, Pigs, Three Different Ones, Sheep, and Pigs on the Wing Part 2. And this is the first album that has no songs written by Richard Wright. It reaches number two in the UK and number three in the US. They went on tour in the States, but Wright was getting very disillusioned with the band. He would arrive at gigs separately and leave immediately thereafter. And at one point, he actually flew back to England and threatened to quit the band. For their next project, Roger Waters presents an idea which he calls Another Brick in the Wall. But when it becomes an album, they shorten the title to The Wall and it's released in 1979. During the recording of the album, Wright contributed very little, and the rest of the band got frustrated with him, and so they decided they would fire him. But then, in order to finish the album, they brought him back and hired him, this time as a salaried musician. This is a concept album which tells the story of a jaded rock star named Pink. And we get his childhood, his rise to stardom, his fame, his groupies, his drug use, his paranoia, which kind of drives him almost insane to the point where he isolates himself behind this wall. And then he gets his act together and tears down the wall. It's a sprawling story which required a double album in order to give it justice. Although it is a concept album designed to be played straight through, Another Brick in the Wall Part 2 was released as a single, and it hit number one in both the U.S. and the U.K. I also like the other single, Comfortably Numb. This was a successful album for Pink Floyd. It sold over 30 million copies. And of course, they decided to go on a big tour. And it is a big tour. It's a massive tour, because as part of the set, they build the wall between them and the audience. Now, as a result, it was a very expensive tour. And it's rumored that no member of Pink Floyd actually made any money off of that tour, except for Richard Wright, because he wasn't a member of Pink Floyd. He was a salaried musician. So he, of course, made money. Waters continued to be the dominant creative force in Pink Floyd. And he said that their next album should be the outtakes and unfinished songs from the wall and he was going to call the album Spare Bricks. Well, that didn't set well with David Gilmour. He felt that the album should be all new original material, but he had a problem. David hadn't written very many new songs for the album, so Roger just pressed ahead and retitled the album The Final Cut. This album took Roger Waters' political anti-war feelings and pushed them right out there in your face. It's all about the Falkland Wars and his hatred for Margaret Thatcher. David Gilmour did not like this album. He disliked the fact that Waters was politicizing. And this new direction prompted arguments. 
He also didn't like the fact that even though he hadn't written any new songs, five of the tracks not used on the wall, Your Possible Pass, One of the Few, The Final Cut, Fletcher Memorial Home, and The Heroes Return had been set aside for spare bricks and then reused. Gilmore did not like including those, and he said that he said to Roger, if these songs weren't good enough to be put on the wall, why are they good enough now? The album was a hit. It hit number one in the UK and number six in the US. But by this point, Gilmore and Waters weren't even talking to each other, so there was no plans to tour to support this, so they didn't. Gilmore goes off and releases his second solo album called About Face, and Waters tours to support his solo album, The Pros and Cons of Hitchhiking. And Mason releases his second solo album during this period called Profiles. In 1984, Waters, Gilmore, and Mason all meet for dinner to discuss the future of Pink Floyd. Now, it's interesting how communication can sometimes get garbled, even when you're sitting right there talking to each other in person. Because when the dinner was over, Gilmore and Mason firmly believed that when Waters finished touring to support the pros and cons of Hitchhiking, his solo album, he would come back and Pink Floyd would continue. Waters, on the other hand, had a totally different opinion, which was that they had all agreed that Pink Floyd was over. So Waters formally left the band and then sued them, saying Pink Floyd was a spent force creatively. But Gilmore and Mason firmly disagreed and intended to continue on. So now a new era of Pink Floyd starts, one without Roger Waters. And the first thing that David Gilmore and Nick Mason do is get their old friend Richard Wright to come back, again as a salaried musician. And they record an album called A Momentary Lapse of Reason. This is not a concept album. Tracks include The Dogs of War, One Slip, a New Machine, Part 1 and Part 2, and Sorrow. Roger Waters tells the press he thinks this is a very weak album and that David Gilmour's writing is third rate. But the album reaches number three in the U.S. and in the U.K. And it's a vindication for Gilmour because it outsells Roger Waters' last Pink Floyd album, The Final Cut. The new Pink Floyd goes out on tour but when Roger Waters sees that they're using the inflatable pig as a prop on the tour, he sues the band. So then the band quickly puts testicles on the inflatable pig. So it's obviously a different pig than the one that, Ro that Roger was upset about. Well, after some animosity, the two sides decide to come to an agreement. And the agreement is that the band can keep the name Pink Floyd and that Roger Waters gets exclusive rights to the wall. It took until 1993 for Pink Floyd to release their next album called The Division Bell. And it seems like the album is all about their problems with Roger, because all the songs have a theme about how communication and talking can solve problems. The tracks include What Do You Want From Me, Poles Apart, Wearing the Inside Out, Take It Back, Keep Talking, and High Hopes. It reaches number one in the UK and the US, and of course they go out on tour to support it. And then on July 2nd, 2005, the unthinkable happens. Roger Waters steps on stage with the rest of Pink Floyd to play live at the Live 8 concert. It's a huge success, and everybody starts clamoring for a reunion tour. But David Gilmore shuts this down by saying, why would I want to do that? I've already done it, been there, done it. Then in 2006, Sid Barrett dies. And then two years later in 2008, Richard Wright dies. And in 2014, Pink Floyd releases their 15th and what would be their final album, The Endless River. It's a double album that's mainly instrumental music. There's only one track, Louder Than Words, that has lead vocals. The album reached number one in the UK and number two in the US, and with that, Pink Floyd was done. Well, at least until 2022, when Gilmore and Mason got together and recorded a single called Hey Hey Rise Up to support the Ukrainians uh, against the Russian invasion. 
Now, Roger Waters has never, ever criticized Russia for that invasion. But boy, did he criticize this song. As you can imagine, David Gilmour and Roger Waters are not on speaking terms. Now, Roger in 2023 decided to re-record Dark Side of the Moon. And he calls it Dark Side of the Moon Redo 2023, or Redux, however you want to say that. Roger's comments have got him into a lot of trouble. On stage, he lets his political stance be very clearly known to the audience. David Gilmour has recorded five solo albums and is very much in demand playing with a variety of different musicians. Nick Mason formed a new band in 2018 called Nick Mason's Saucer Full of Secrets and continues to tour performing early Pink Floyd songs. Now, as usual, I've created a Spotify playlist, and here's the link, and I'll put it in the comments down below as well. You can go there and listen to a lot of the Pink Floyd music that we've just been talking about. From their early psychedelic hits, to their spacey improvisations, to their success, to their best-selling albums, to their breakups, tensions, lawsuits, reforming, breaking up, continuing, Pink Floyd has certainly had a career. But we still don't know which one was pink, do we? <laughs> well, thanks for watching and shine on you, Crazy Diamond, and keep a rockin'. If you liked this episode, hit the like button, and you can also leave me a comment down below, and I'll respond to you. If you subscribe, we'll let you know when future episodes come out.